Good morning, guys. Um, I hope you have a great Monday. I'm so sorry I can't be there, but Miss Smith is there, and I just wanted to touch base with you guys. So today you are going to be doing 1.2, Characteristics of Functions and Graph, and that starts on page 13. So today, basically what you're going to do is you're going to learn to relate the characteristics of real-world phenomena to characteristics of its function graph. So here's your warm-up for today. The question goes, Nikita worked as a babysitter. A graph of her rate of pay is shown below. How much does Nikita earn per hour of babysitting? So if you look at that, you might want to try to find some coordinates. Easy one that you can kind of tell a little bit. So you know, here's the time she works, how many hours she works with the money she earns. So if she doesn't work any, she's not going to make any. So if I look through here, I can see that if she works four hours, you see how I can tell that's prominent? Four hours, she's going to make $50, okay? So this one is really not on the cursor. That one's not on the cursor. Neither is that one, but this one is, wow, maybe it's $5.50, huh? It could be $5, five hours for 60 That sounds better. I think that one looks better. So I'm going to use that one. So in five hours, she makes 50 bucks. So how much does she get paid per hour? So $50, she gets paid for five hours. So if I were to convert that, that would be $10 per hour, okay? So that's how much Nikita earns. All right, if you would, if you have a hard time reading any of this, please go to your textbook. This is on page 13, and this is where we are starting right now. So page 13, here we go. There's a picture right there. Okay. Let me hide a few things. There we go. And it says that complete part A, here we go, and it says, <clears throat> what is a mathematical question you can ask about this situation? What information would you need to know to answer your question? How would the maximum speed and average speed affect your answer? What unit measure would you use to compare them? So those are things you can kind of ask yourself and kind of answer those questions, okay? But my question is this. Brianna roller coaster has two steep drop, as you can see right here. See that very steep drop? And then Denver's roller coaster has a climb. Climbs higher and higher. How do you determine which one is faster? Well, if you knew some mathematical information, you could probably answer this question. So here's an example of what, if I had some mathematical questions and I knew how tall they were, I could do some of these math problems. Let me see if I can get that not to be so blurry. There we go. <coughs> So the only thing you need to remember is maybe you convert feet to miles if your answer is going to be in miles, and it's always miles over. See how one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. You need to convert minutes to your hours. So in, uh, point, in 1.5 minutes times one hour per minute. So all these things. And to find an average speed, it's miles per hour. There you go. What I really wanted to point out is, here's the common error. To find speed, and you want the answers in miles per hour, the way they have this here is hours per mile. So just kind of be careful of that. You don't need to write any of this part down, okay? But I just want to, if it says miles per hour, mile, miles needs to be your numerator, and hours needs to be your denominator. And a lot of times that's where students mess up. All right, now we're gonna get to the lesson, and I do want you to write some notes, okay? Here we go. Here's some vocabulary I want you to learn. So if you need to pause, pause the video, and write this in your notebook. So some of these you already know. And then I'm going to explain a few words of how they have it written to make more sense to you. Okay? All right. Increasing interval. As you can see, we always go from left to right. So if I have a graph, okay, and right here is one, right here is two, right here is three, right here is four. And if I have a graph going up, as you can see right there, all right, this point would be my f of a, 
and this point would be my f of b. Basically, this is your y value. So when x is 1, y is f of a. When x is 3, that is your f of b. So basically, that's what it's saying to you. Okay, so you have a point. I don't have a point, so I'm going to call it f of a. That's your y value. I don't have a point for f of b, so I'm gonna, that's my y value. All it's saying is, hey, from the left to the right, if this one, b, f of b, is bigger than a, f of a, then your interval is increasing. So, like I did the other day, put your hand on the left. Is it going up or is it going down? This one is going up, okay? So there you have interval increasing. Interval decreasing would be something like this. So here is your f of a, which is your y value, is more than this y value, which is f of b. This is a decreasing interval. That is all it's saying. a is bigger than f of b. f of b is bigger than f of a. So you're looking at the y value comparison. Turning point. A turning point is a function changes from increasing to decreasing and vice versa. So if I have a graph, should label my x, always label your x. And I have a parabola, which is a quadratic, okay? Do you see this point right here? That is your turning point. So basically, it's the turn. And if you have something like a cubic function, you might have more than that. So a cubic function will look something like this. So how many turns does a cubic function have? Two, one right here and one right here. So as you can see, that's what a turning point is. Zeros, I believe you guys know, it is a value of x for which f of x is equal to zero. So that means your y is always zero. So a coordinate would be x comma zero. Another word for zero is your x-intercepts and your roots. And if you try to find it, zeros, you can go to second calc on your calculator and you hit zero. You remember that? Okay. So those are some things you have to do to find it if you were graphing it on a calculator. Maximum, your highest point. Minimum, your lowest point. And this one is actually an absolute maximum and this one's a relative ma maximum. We'll get into that a little bit later, okay? All right, average rate of change. The definition mathematically says this. Intervals, A and B, including A and B, is the ratio. Ratio is a fraction. So if you forgot what that is, is a ratio of the change in function value, F of B minus F of A, to the corresponding change in the x value. All right, that sounds kind of crazy, but let me explain. So basically, the average rate of change is your slope, m. If you had y equals m x plus b. Remember how that's linear? Your slope is a change of y value over a change of x value. And a lot of times you guys see y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You have also seen it as y1 minus y2, x1 minus x2. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to do it with the y2 minus y1. So let me explain why. Okay? So if you're looking at this, this is explaining. f of b is your second y. See that? Minus your f of a, there's your y1, over the change in x value. And what's your change in x value? b minus a. So basically, all of this definition is that right there. Basically, average rate of change is your slope. This is your slope. y2 minus y1 divided by b over a, okay? So if you have, for example, if I have two points, two and 49, there's one point and there's the other one, negative four and 50, how's that? So my m would be 
49 minus 50 divided by 2 minus negative 4, okay? Or if you want to make this one your y2, this would be 50 minus 49 divided by negative 4 minus 2. Either way, you're going to get the same solution, the same numerical answer. So it's a change of x over a change of y. So watch what I do right here, okay? I'm going to put parentheses around it because that's a grouping. 40 minus 50 divided by 2, a negative, negative becomes a positive. Oop, I forgot that, 2 plus 4. And let's change this to a fraction, which is negative 1, 6. Let's see if we switched it around. Parentheses, 50 minus 49, parentheses, divided by negative 4 minus 2. Notice the negative is shorter than the subtraction. Math, enter, enter. Do you see how you have the same solution? So, an average rate of change is the same as slope. This is something you may have not seen before, right here, but it's another way to write that, okay? All right, since I mentioned the word relative maximum and relative minimum, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what that means, okay? So, relative max is basically high points it might not be your highest point. So if I'm looking at this graph, you see how that's a high point? But the highest one actually keeps going this way. That is called an absolute max. At this moment, you don't need to worry about that. So absolute max is your highest point. And a relative is just high points. They're high, but they're not the highest, okay? Same goes for relative minimum. It's a low point, and I'm going to do it with an S because sometimes you have more than one. So as you can see, that's your relative minimum. But the lowest point, the arrow keeps going, and that is called your absolute minimum, and that is your lowest of low. Okay, so lowest point. You don't need to know those words yet, but I figure I might as well tell it to you since we're already on the top. All right, now what I want you guys to do is I want you to go to your book because you can see it so much better than the picture I have here. So in your textbook, go to page 14. And this is what I want you guys to do, okay? I just want you to recognize increasing, decreasing, maximum, minimum. Constant. So. It says, a dam controls a reservoir's water level. As you can see, it starts off right here, okay? The level is currently steady and above normal. So this is your water level right here. Do you guys see that? Okay. What it's saying is, for the first, this is time of day, so for the first four and a half days, right here, from here to here, okay? So from 0 to 4.5 days, the water is at a constant. It's not rising, and it's not decreasing or increasing. It is constant. Constant at, oh, I don't know, what do you think, say? Constant maybe at 8? It doesn't say, does it? No, nope. it looks like 8. We'll say 8. Okay, so it's at 8 feet. Constant 8 feet. It could be nine, but we're gonna call it eight because I'm just trying to teach you guys a few things. All right, from, that looks like five days, not four and a half. So sorry, I'm gonna look at my scale. So that's two, four, five, okay, five days. Zero to five days, it is at a constant. To prepare for incoming rain, the engineers will lower the water. As you can see, the level of the water goes down, even goes below the water level, okay? At a constant rate, constant means it's steady, it's going the same amount every hour until it is below normal. So this right here is normal. The water level is then expected to rise with the rain. You guys see that? And then after it quits raining, it's gonna start to level off. And eventually, from here, it's going to go at a constant rate. 
So, from five days to about nine days, so, you know, it's like maybe day six. Five to nine, what is happening right there? It is decreasing. You guys see that? Even to the point of beyond, going beyond normal. Decrease so much to like negative 10. That looks like negative 10. So minimum water and turning point. See that? There's a turn. Then from 9 to about 12 days, it must be raining because water is going up so much. And from 12 days to 18 days, the water is starting to, is still rising because there's a lot of water there, but then it will start heading into the constant where it's going to level off back to about 8 feet. So notice the day never stops, okay? This tells you the water level in feet, but this tells you the days. It never stops. So you're going from zero to four days, but there's no change. And then the slope decreases. And if you look at this, it's decreasing about the same rate as it's uh, going up until about 12, then it starts to go off, okay? So as you can see, the water here is rising rapidly, and then it's not, it's still rising, but not as much. So that's probably when it quit raining. All right, you didn't need to write this down, but F of A and F of B, say for example, if this is F of B, then this might be F of A. That shows you the increase. That's why I wrote that. But if this was F of A, this would be F of B. The water is decreasing because F of B is right here. If this was F, this right here, then they're saying F of A is greater than, sorry, I got that backwards. F of B is greater than F of A. That's why it's increasing. And if I had done F of A here and F of B, F of A is greater than F of B, the water is decreasing. So that's just the language I wanted you to know. You don't need to write this down at all, but I wanted you to see if you understood it, okay? All right, so a lot of this is just kind of learning. All right, now if you would, turn to your uh, page 17, okay, of your book, and we're going to look at a few things and answer a few things. So this is on page 17. So I skipped a few pages. We'll go on to page 17. Now, here's a real world, okay? And it says, a roller coaster ride begins at ground level. Did you guys see the ground level? And then it starts to go up the first 40 seconds. So here's your time in seconds. Notice they labeled the seconds. See if I can get a little closer. There we go. Can you guys see that better? Okay, but you can also look at your book. All right. So roller coaster begins at ground level. So this is at the ground. The first 40 seconds. After 40 seconds, you notice it goes up a lot. So it's trying to get, uh, trying to climb as high as it can so gravity can take over. So with changes in elevation. Next, the roller coaster rises steadily for 50 seconds. So from here to about right here, which is about 90. It's maximum elevation. Then it plums it back to the ground. Woo! And then gravity just kind of takes over, and that's how you get roller coasters. So the hard part is trying to get up there. In the next six seconds, it rises to an elevation of 100 feet as you can see right there, drops back down to the ground level to six seconds that follow. The remaining 90 seconds of the ride includes small inclines and drops before returning to the ground. So gravity is causing it to go up, and then it comes down, gets, still has more speed, and now it slowly comes back to the ground. So let's answer some of these questions. What are the two quantities that are plotted on the graph? Well, the time in second, and also what? The elevation in feet. Don't forget to write your units, okay? Does the graph show the shape of the roller coaster? It does not. It shows you as it's going, so from zero to 200 seconds, that's how long the ride is, okay? So no, it's, that's not the shape of the roller coaster. This is how fast you were going, how close you were to the ground, and all that. So, does the graph show the, no, the graph shows the height of the roller coaster over time. The ups and downs of the graph may appear to resemble a roller coaster, but the graph showing the shape of a roller coaster would have horizontal distance on the x-axis and vertical distance on the y-axis. So, if this had been the shape of the roller coaster, 
your graph will look like this. The x-axis would have been your horizontal distance of the roller coaster, and over the y-axis would have been your vertical distance in feet. But it's not. So it, it's not showing the shape of the roller coaster because it would have gone like starting here, going up, and all that. It, you think it is, but it's not. It's showing your speed, how fast you're going. How can you calculate the time in second when the roller coaster reaches ground level after the first drop? So there's many ways. It says from the first drop, it starts dropping right here at about 90, right? So, um, and then it, from there, this is about 100. Let me see. How can you calculate the time in seconds when the roller coaster reaches ground level after the first drop? So it goes up and it comes down after the first drop right there, which is about 100, right? So the time in seconds, so what time is it from here to here? Somewhere between 200 minus 100. So that's the distance. I can't tell really. Let me see. Oh, it looks like it's a little bit more than that. Okay. So 40 plus 50 plus 8. So, so this one comes out to be about 98 seconds. And the symbol for second is this. So you just want how far away. How can you calculate the time in second when the roller coaster reaches ground level after the first drop? Okay. So the description allows you to find some important values in the graph and all that. So this comes out to be 98. But easier way is from the ground to the ground, it's actually 40 plus 50 plus 8. Okay. It's the sum of the first 40 seconds of the, of the only turn, because it tells you it was 40, and then it climbs steadily for 50. There's your 50. And then the 8 second, the roller coaster took to return to the ground. So there's your 8, there's your 50, and there's your 40. That's how you got 98 seconds. All right. So basically, you're just analyzing graph, figuring out what is happening with the graph today. Your assignment is you need to complete the 1.2 CFU in Google Classroom. There's only like three questions. Okay, try to do your best. I just want to know if you understand what's happening in the graph because this leads you into the next lesson, which is transformation. When you get done, this is the assignment. Actually, what I did was I made a paper copy for you, but if you want to see how it correlates, these are the numbers, number 4 through 10, number 14, and 17 through 20. Okay, do it on paper for me, please. Um, but you do have access to online textbook if you have a hard time reading it. So I try as best as I could to cut and paste. But this is your assignment for Monday. On Tuesday, we're going to start 1.3. I miss you guys. Have a good day.